Hi, I'm Ian Hanmore. I'm here with uh, Chris Gordon of Hellblazer Biz. Uh, looking forward to a little chat. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, my lovely viewers and listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. You are tuned in to Hellblazer Biz with your one and only host, Chris Gordon. That was supposed to be the one and only Hellblazer Biz with host Chris Gordon. But never mind, shall we? will just move on and leave it. This is the show that gives interviews with your favourite TV and film stars and gets you to ask the questions that you want to hear and gets you a shout out, hopefully, too. Today's guest is no different to any other, an esteemed actor off stage and screen who I had the pleasure of talking to last week. So apologies, this comes out now. And apologies for my surroundings. I am in my London abode. Uh, yes, I am that posh. I have a London abode as well now, just outside of London, but who cares? <laughs> anyway, without further ado, I shall bring to you my guest. He is known for his roles in the sci-fi world from Doctor Who, Game of Thrones, where he stole Daenerys' dragons, and also, more recently, in the Highland hit Outlander. Without further ado, I am so proud to present to you Mr. Ian Hanmore. <laughs> everybody i have the honor and the privilege of talking with esteemed actor ian hanmore this evening ian I i'm gonna say esteemed you're esteemed in my eyes how are you i'll be esteemed i'll take that i'll take that <laughs> esteemed in your eyes is fine excellent so how are you this evening this fine evening i'm fine yes very good thanks uh relaxed at home ready to answer questions inappropriately <laughs> and adequately be my guest <laughs> that's what people like to hear so Ramble away, and we'll uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, nice little conversation. And yes, <laughs> yes, and hopefully the questions are ones that will spark up some. Uh, Trident must go. Trident <laughs> must go. <laughs> oh, no, yes. to no to fracking. <laughs> yep. Start on the <laughs> politics straight away. We'll be <laughs> oh dear, you've no idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, well, Trident, especially for you, um, being a Scotsman. That's well, a, it's kind of close to home, but yeah, it, 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 it's got it's got reach, you know, <laughs> got reach. Yeah, yeah. 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 All, all of that stuff's very alive at the moment up here. That politics is uh, has become kind of yeah, lively, livelier, livelier in Scotland these days since since two thousand and fourteen. So yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We, lots of things have been added to the the, the conversations uh, in daily life. Yeah, definitely. Whereabouts in Scotland are you? I'm just south of Edinburgh. Just oh, south of Edinburgh, yeah. yeah. Just area. ten miles out in a place called Pennycook. Oh, lovely. Hill of the Cuckoo in Old Welsh. Ah. <laughs> Penny Pennycock. Pennycock. Excellent. Excellent. I'll be visiting around there next March in the Easter holidays. We're going to stay bits further south than oh, I've forgotten the name. Peebles? No, you've got Edinburgh, then you go down the coast towards um hmm. the places, Imouth. I'm out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, it's lovely down there. Fishing. fishing. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. It looks great for that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And yeah, crabbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to holiday down there when I was a kid. It's lovely. Yeah. lovely. Fantastic coast. Yeah, we're up in Edinburgh a few years ago as well. It's a beautiful city. Really yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, we're lucky. We're lucky. We have it on our doorstep and take it for granted. But we're only about 10 miles out of the centre here. Yeah. It's gradually swallowed up here in Benicke <laughs> by the. You know, by the, urban, by the big the smoke expansion, yeah, yeah. old Ricky, old Ricky, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. I like that in Wales as well. It's definitely here because I've got, you know, like in Scotland, you're surrounded by castles, you're surrounded by everything. And oh, you love you just take Wales, it, you, yeah. just, you just take it for granted, and then you know, listeners in America are just like, oh my god, you're just so jealous because you just, you know, I, was like, I can see a castle from a back garden. Well, no, I can't but see you know, almost see castles from a back garden. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing all around North Wales. It's it's, it's phenomenal, and the, the the heritage of it all, and the 
you know, the memories as well. You're a bit like Scotland in that respect. You have the memories <laughs> yeah. of, of Edward's, uh, Edward's nasty business with these yes. castles all around the place. Old Longshanks and his... Uh... <laughs> basically, basically turning Wales into a, a prison camp. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fantastic, yeah. fantastic heritage there. That was amazing to see it all. We oh, were down yeah. just a couple of weeks ago, oh, as you may be, you may be yes, aware. Yes, you were, yes. You're yeah, right. yeah, that was, that was fun. Fun, lovely yeah. to meet people. Great fun. That was the Clandidno one, wasn't it? The Clandidno? It was. I think it was Sci-Fi Wheels. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I couldn't make that one. I was actually, I was, that weekend, I was actually in London, I think, at the time. Um, I hadn't come back home again, but it's literally 13 miles away from me. So I was like, oh. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, we, we loved it. We, we, we went, uh, we knew a little bit of it because we visited occasionally mm. when we were visiting. A, we were staying in a place some years ago with a family called Tanny, Tanny Castle. Is right. That? Uh, anyway, we had to drop people at the station in Flandern and we noticed it. And when, when this came up, we thought, oh, well, we'll spend a few days there, a few extra mm. days, if you like, when we're down for the, the con. Yeah. And we got there and we were walking up and we thought, looked at each other, my wife and I, and said, this place is full of old people. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, a, a little, uh, after a few hours of, you know, bemoaning this fact, we suddenly realised when we looked in a shop window that we were... Kind of <laughs> old people <laughs> oh. bit, threw us off a bit short yeah yeah it's, not uh, quite it's, that but yeah yeah no yeah Col yeah Colwyn Bay and Clan did know it seemed, they call it the retirement villages because <laughs> it's they, they, it really is and I mean you know oh god yeah uh, the people having their second uh, wind up there with their hat with their uh, what's it Honda Gold Wings and yeah uh, Stuff like that, and Hell's Angels uh, that maybe got a blue rinse. It's, a, it's an interesting environment. <laughs> blue rinse, yeah. Hell's Angels, love it. Yeah, but yeah, you, you're you're very correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as I said, we've got some questions in the way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, get, away. fire away through Let's those. Do Let's do it. So, first question I've got. This one comes up quite a lot from. Uh, a couple of people, including myself, because I'm starting out, is what kind of advice would you give? You've obviously got a, had a great career in acting yourself in stage and screen. What, what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out on this path now? Um, oh, uh, I think probably the advice I would give anyone is, is um, be sure you want the very baseline involvement in the career. Ex go into it knowing that you'd be happy with uh, a really baseline kind of career level. Mm -hmm. uh, then you won't be disappointed either. <laughs> but also you'll have that practical, um, a practical kind of approach to progressing your career. Yeah. I, um, one of my first love actually is music. I write and record and hide the results away <laughs> in various formats. Um, but I have done that all my life and uh, I, that was a serious thing for me right through my early life and I dreamt an awful lot about it mm -hmm. and had a lot of big big ambitions and big dreams uh, but wasn't as proactive perhaps as I might have been or pragmatic as I might have been yeah. uh, when I came into acting rather late I came in, I didn't actually begin until I was 39 mm -hmm. uh, and so from that point I was completely pragmatic, accepting whatever would come my way as an actor, I just threw my fate to the wind and went for it. Yeah. And I think that served me well. And I think it's the idea that you're being uh, as proactive as you can be, trying to get involved with people locally. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I particularly got involved with people at Edinburgh Film School and Edinburgh University Theatre Company. Whilst I was studying here in Edinburgh, I only yeah. did a year because I'm, you know, I felt a year of basic study mm -hmm. level than a higher national certificate in drama and theatre was but right for me. I didn't think I could sustain myself for a further three years in the uh, <laughs> student environment, shall we yeah. say. I wanted to get going with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would say keep the dreams, but keep them keep them in perspective and uh, be proactive and, and get involved with people as much as you can who are trying to pursue the same career in your area. 
That's a great bit of advice, then. It's nice to hear that you were 39 at the time, because I was 39 when I started this podcasting thing and the interviewing, yeah. and uh, it's nice to Just hear that. Just a child. <laughs> Just a child. Yeah. So it's nice to hear that you can, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, the famous one is Samuel L. Jackson as well, a really big one who didn't start, and Morgan Freeman started very late in their careers, you know, it's yes. that as well. So it's just, it doesn't matter how old you are. I think you're right. If you've got a dream, just follow it and make Absolutely. sure you work hard. The dream, is, the dream is essential. And I think if you want something and work for it, uh, then the two are a great combination, you know, the two combination, the dream and the, and, the, and, the, and the work ethic really is what will get you there. Yeah, definitely. And it will, and it will, you know. Oh yes, definitely. I mean, and I'm, I'm working hard. I'm talking to the likes of you, so <laughs> it does, it does pay off. And I'm working hard talking to the likes of you. Chris. <laughs> yeah. There we go. See. You never That's... know. It could be of mutual benefit. It could be. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm certain it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Jonathan Ross, eat your heart out. That's what my guy. Oh, to hell with him. Yeah. <laughs> I actually told I've got a publicist friend in LA who she's helped me out a few times and um, okay. I told her I said oh, she goes what do you want to do because I want to, I've got a TV pitch and everything for what I want to do because I'm building up now to, to sort of that there and she, yeah, turned, okay. she she asked me what my idea was I said I just want to knock James Corden off his top spot and her reply was I love that idea <laughs> yeah but right right yeah yeah there's, there's a lot of people a lot oh, yeah. of fish coming through that pool oh yes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah that's my, that's my <laughs> ultimate goal but you know if, even if I get to a smidgen of where he is then well, I'll be yeah, shoot for the stars and hit the moon you know exactly okay. <laughs> is that what they like, say I don't know I'm not sure. like yes yeah it's but, something like that. yeah they say shoot for the stars why aim for the stars when you've got the whole universe beyond it <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> yeah. Yeah. better all the time yeah exactly <laughs> cool um, you're both experienced with stage and screen do you have a preferred medium or media to which to perform to I know they're very different in the way you you, I, I, I don't think you can pick. They, they, are, they both have so many nice things about them, mm -hmm. uh, attractions for an actor. I love the idea uh, of, of, of the immediacy of stage. They all, everyone says this, and it's true. You have that instant can, you know, gratification, if you yeah. like, of, of playing, playing every night. It's a new one. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the great thing, I, I guess, that I've enjoyed about stage. But for screen... I just love the idea that the camera can get right in your, inside your head. Yeah. You know, you just need to you just need to sit in front of a camera and think, and people can almost read your mind. You know, <laughs> mm. if you've got that kind of face that just you you know you can't quite hide your feelings. <laughs> yeah. I think it's uh, it, one of the first auditions I ever did actually was for someone at Edinburgh Film School. It uh, auditioned me for the graduation film, and uh, I was at college at that time, mm. and he just had me come in front of the camera, stand there, <laughs> and gave me. Um, the, the advice don't don't do anything mm -hmm. i just want to see what grief feels like <laughs> you know and he would yeah. get he would just throw emotions at me and have mm -hmm. me do nothing he just wanted to see my face when that idea was put to me yeah and then he gave me a great great article by john boorman and uh oh who was he interviewing there was two two film directors discussing it and they were talking mm -hmm. about the the fact that the art of camera acting really is just to be there, do nothing, just be there, be in that moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took a lot from that and I took a lot of comfort from that actually because, uh, you know, at that time it was, uh, you know, it was good to know that uh, you didn't have to, you yeah. could be introverted, you could be introverted, but if you, as long as you could be in the moment mm -hmm. and play that, that, that moment for real, the camera would, would, would be happy with you, you know? Yeah. Fantastic. And see through fakery in a camera, but some people. I was acting with a guy in a film actually, but he was a stage actor and a West End guy. Mm -hmm. And he said to me that he could d decide what he was having for dinner that evening while he was standing on stage, <laughs> you know, in a non, you know, non-speaking yeah. situation. And I just thought that level of disengagement emotionally is something that probably stage can afford you from time to time. I, it mm -hmm. wouldn't be my way of doing it. I have to play things. Yeah always um, for real and relying on my intuition. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I believe that is something that stage requires of you, uh, you know, to be, uh, I don't know, I'm waffling. Crack on. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, no, no, sorry. That's, um, <clears throat> I was going to say the theatre as well, because I used to do theatre myself and I loved it. I mean, I stopped when I was 18 because I, I was 
put pointed into a sensible career is how I was pointed into the directions of it. That's and I, I ended yeah. up giving it up for twenty years, and then you know, I mean, I was in a film last year as well with a few lines in there, so that was quite cool. But I remember, yeah. when I, I remember when I was on stage, I was just, I couldn't disengage. If I was on stage and I was in that character, I, even though I, was st- I still had to be thinking about where I was, you know, I, I wouldn't, I have, I wouldn't, yeah. I, I wasn't skilled enough to be able to just disengage and then just switch back. I, I guess that is a certain sort of skill, and that's certainly the way I've kind of understood it from some people who've explained <laughs> it to me. But I'm not that sort of um, uh, worker in that regard. I would, I would always have to be in the moment and always have to be. I guess most. Most actors are that way, the way that I'm describing. Yeah. But some, some can, I guess, the older fashion type of stage performance performer required to, you know, mm-hmm. project in a, in a, I guess, in a physical way, in a larger way than, than the camera requires. Yeah. Yeah, but I agree uh, with it. I agree with the way you're talking about it because I think you can see the difference in performance between someone who isn't fully engaged and they're just on there. They're just, you know, they can just go throw themselves in the lines. Whereas someone who's actually feeling and living the part, you can really, especially on stage. I mean, on screen you can see it; it does come through, um, yeah. but not as much as on stage. And I mean, you know, I mean, you, you you do you see it? I mean, I went to see Knives in Hens about a couple of weeks ago. Which oh, is, I, yeah, down at the yeah. Donmar with Matt Ryan, David Harrower. David Harrower. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. Christian Cook. Yeah. Christian uh, Cook, I think his Christian name is Christian Cook, and Matt Christian. Ryan. Um, All right. He was always a great guy. He's a friend of the show as well. Uh, mm. But yeah, that was a powerful because you could see they were they were they were fully engaged. They, you know, obviously, they had to be. There's only three of them throughout the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it was you know. That's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a very dark play as well. <laughs> yes, yes, right. right. Yeah, yeah. So so you enjoyed that then? That was I did. Was, yeah. What was the name of the company? It was oh it's the Donmar Warehouse it was at, but I can't All right. remember the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, but I can't remember the company's yeah. name. Right, right. Yeah, it was uh it, I think you, yeah, you're right. I mean you especially in intimate spaces you can really pick up everything. It wouldn't ever do for someone just to be, you know, yeah, going through the motions. Going through the motions is a. I think it's it's an it's maybe a phenomenon from, you know, long ago. Mm. I'm not that um, sure that nowadays that isn't that that's the case. I mean, obviously people recognise authenticity or want uh, people to be more. I think honest. Yeah. Maybe yeah. unschooled or even you know, although uh, I don't know. It's a strange, <laughs> it's a strange thing. The acting profession at the moment is not an even playing field for mm-hmm. for people to come into yeah uh, in this country mm-hmm. uh, it's an area where if privilege still privilege still uh smooths the smooths the path that mm-hmm. we're, yeah i i know what you're saying i was actually reading an article yesterday which made me shocked and it was about that privilege about a certain organization which is charges a tv license <laughs> so i'll just say it like that i'm sure you know exactly yeah and they they've got yeah. their, their priority arts show they've got their, their, their i think it was their um it was quite their flagship arts show on bbc2 i can't remember the name of the show but there's three presenters one of them won't go to theater because it said it's he just finds it very frustrating the seats are uncomfortable and he just doesn't engage into theater the other one's not been to theater in seven years because they're looking after kids and the other one, third one, just says that she's just disinterested in it. And but because of yeah, <laughs> I think it's because of where they've come around that sort of area, they've suddenly been boosted into the flagship arts program. Yeah. But none of them actually like the arts. <laughs> That's puzzling. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's That's just. Puzzling. But it, I, I kind of see because, especially in the acting world as well, there's, there's yeah, you can there's a a class advantage still in certain areas as well. I think you can see that. Yeah, very, very much. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, even just from the point of view of tuition fees, mm. that's a great bar. But I think also in, in terms of choice of intake in some of these uh, uh, schools, it's kind of weighted towards a certain background. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm, I think you have certain advantages if you come from a certain background. Yeah. I think you know what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. that, that, that to me is a sad thing to see this so far on in our evolution. You know, when <laughs> having lived through a time and grown up in a time when working class people could, could come through, mm-hmm. could make a real impression, 
easily yep. on uh, in the business. Uh, now it just seems to be a bit locked out. Mm. Seem to be locked out of it. Yeah, you know, with a few with a few notable exceptions. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, exactly. Not not, not 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 great times from for the arts from that point of view. I don't think. No, no, yeah, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Those, yeah, the, and I think that's just a, a society show society in general. Well, yeah, yeah, when, you're, when, you're, when your financial status, your ethnicity, your sexuality, and all the rest are still you know big factors in your selection. Yeah, then, it's just then, <laughs> It's, it's yeah. It's always going to be make the arts a poorer thing, you know. Yeah. Well, the performing arts a poorer thing. Exactly. But, I, I was speaking to a lovely uh, Chandler Kinney. She's from Lethal Weapon. Last uh, I was speaking to her last week. She's a lovely young girl. She's an African American actress. All right. And she had some great things about how the, you know the things that she's coming against in America, trying to get into acting. Um. So I was try- I, I informed her. She didn't realise that we got a female Doctor Who now. And I said that's a huge thing. And I said and I think it's absolutely fantastic because. There, I don't think there's any, yeah I don't think there's any character like that that sh- I mean you know people are moaning about it but seriously it's a, it's an alien yeah. a fictional alien who time travels yeah why would you have any universe, issues yeah, yeah. why would you have any issues with what sex they are I mean what even it's what kind of, it's, it's so, it, yeah it's so long overdue you know <laughs> these sorts of choices in the casting of that it, definitely it, it, you know the discussion is entirely vacuous you know why, why <laughs> you know you know why would you even you know, exactly. It, it's going to be, it's, I'm sure it'll be it'll, it'll rejuvenate it in a, actually. So yeah, I think so because I think yeah, cause, the results. I mean, it has been good, but yeah, I'm I think, being cast. <laughs> sorry, I look forward to seeing the results of it all. Oh yes, definitely. I'm and being, being cast. cast. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it will be great. Um, I think it'll be a fantastic thing to watch as well because she's a cracking actress. Yeah, very yeah, very yeah. good. Great work. Great yeah, work. Definitely, work. definitely. Okay, moving on. What's to you is the most important thing when you're going for a role? Yourself. Um, th- that somebody asks me to go for a role. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I guess it's always nice to when when you can get a few sides in the screen test that really light up, come mm-hmm. off the page at you. You know. It's yeah. always nice when they hand you a piece of script to read and you just get it right away. Mm. That's that's a, that's a fun thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but nothing nothing other than that. Other than that, and uh, yeah, being asked to uh, to try it out in the first place. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a huge bonus. Huh? That's always a good. That's always a good thing, isn't it? Oh yes, definitely. Definitely. Be asked in the first place, but yeah, when 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 you get a really well written thing that just mm-hmm. jumps off the page at you, that's that's great. That's, that's what you want. That's what you want. Good okay. writing. Brilliant. So. Following from there, then how did you feel when you were given the role of uh, Piat then in season two of Game of Thrones? Yeah, it, it was a surprise. I went, I went in for the um, a few a few weeks earlier to see Robert Stern and be cast in the role of, uh, or to be tried out for the role of Craster. Okay. Uh, I'm not really a Craster type of guy, I don't <laughs> think, but I didn't know that. Yeah. And I went in, and I, I had watched. By my rather uh, unconfident, uh, shaky, uh, um, normal kind of behaviour after an, in- an interview, I came out and thought, I have so nailed that. I have completely nailed that part. <laughs> and I got a call within half an hour, which was fantastic. I thought, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they said, they loved you, um, but you've not got the part. <laughs> which was uh, a nice. surprise. Because I could given I was so completely, I thought, I have nailed that. I have yeah. so nailed that. Mm-hmm. But that was just thanks to Robert Stern's fantastic direction and, uh, you know, feeding of the lines. He uh, He's great at, mm. at, at, uh, in those casting situations, uh, apart from anything else. But he had something in mind, and that was Piat Pri, and mm-hmm. had me back a few weeks later. That was what he saw when I was doing Craster. <laughs> That's not Craster. Yeah. Could be this creepy, yeah, you're a creepy, creepy dude. Creepy guy. <laughs> could be this creepy dude. Not for the first time I've had that in my career, uh, <laughs> and so yes, yeah, it was it was it was great when I found out I had that part. I was so chuffed when I yeah. read it. It was one of those you know moments where you get mm-hmm. the script and you think, oh yes, uh, I, I know what this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean by then Game of Thrones is already huge and it's starting to get that massive momentum. Yes. So you know to to get into there and have be that part must have been so exciting to, oh, to yeah. know you're going to be in that universe. Absolute gift for an actor. I mean to I mean. To come into and do four, uh, four episodes and, and play such a kind of sinister and uh, mm-hmm. prominent part, 
the weasel and die and die 20 <laughs> minutes before the end of the series it's yeah a, a real in flames is a real plus and oh, the duplication yeah. of the, the duplication effects were, were lots of fun you know? <laughs> oh god yeah yeah, yeah, yeah stand then, there stand there and stand there <laughs> And I mean, it wasn't, you know, it's like yeah. in Game of Thrones, it wasn't just a side story either. You were, you were actually, you know, you were engaging with the like, you know, likes of Amelia Clark, everyone like that as well. So you were, it was a huge, big part. Yeah, yeah. Massive part thought. of season two. Aye, it was, it was good. I mean, and, and, and uh, Time magazine called me season two's guilty, guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It was kind of nice. Kind of yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was great fun, great fun part to play. Yeah. Lovely people, and uh, yeah, happy memory. Fantastic. Carissa's yeah. actually asked a question there. She goes, "What's it like playing a character on Game of Thrones that people will never forget? Because you took Daenerys's dragons, and the fans will never forget that." <laughs> I know. Well, that's right. And and if, when you meet fans, you, you kind of uh, they, they they expect you, you'll have this kind of real take on 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 on, on all and opinions mm. on all these different. Um, goings on, mm-hmm. and I don't, and I don't actually, you know. <laughs> Generally, I'll say who's gonna when they say who's gonna win out in the end. I, I say me because <laughs> I don't, you know. Yeah. I, just, I just couldn't get involved. It's so complex, um, and I need to catch up anyway. I hadn't, I hadn't followed the series through to the end or anything. Mm-hmm. I don't watch a lot of television actually. Yeah. Well, I guess if you're in that kind of sometimes, if you know. When you are in that sort of role, you, you, you know you're working so hard that you just don't get a chance, and it's not something that you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's life um, things happening all the time. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, as, <laughs> as John Lennon uh, said wisely. So mm-hmm. that's that's it. Life, life. Um, but yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Simon Barry Brisbois over in Canada um, would like to say. What were your fondest memories of working with the series, um, Game of Thrones? What were the what were the really fond memories there, and were there maybe perhaps any funny things that or things that went on which may you know behind the scenes we would not know. Scene, we, or, or behind, we, the, <laughs> behind the scenes scandal. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, we're all there laughing. We're all seeing the serious side of things and not realizing that it probably took six takes. To do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there was a. Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. Scandal. I can't think of any scandal, but certainly, uh, what was what was one of my pleasant, most pleasant, pleasant memories about the working was the the fact that the writers were on mm-hmm. set with us. The, you know, having a you know the opportunity just to chat in between takes to you know David and Dan and uh, others from uh, the commission that were responsible for the commissioning of it, mm-hmm. and uh, I just the general kind of tone of the of the shoots yeah. was one of the most pleasant things about it. Uh, that, I mean, the little odd, strange things happened. We had, uh, in the chamber scene, first one I did, um, uh, we had, uh, with Alan Taylor, who was my director for that first involvement, which mm-hmm. was the actual final scenes in the in the in the chamber, you know, the, with, the, with the 13 doors and yeah. Amelia chained up in the centre and the dragons, you know, oh, yeah. having a and a, a saucer of milk and it was mm-hmm. basically that 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 chamber that we filmed actually exists it, it exists uh, they put an extra door in but it, it right. does have all the other doors oh, wow. it, is, it is a it is a circular vault within the castle uh, cool. in dubrovnik old town mm-hmm. and they had to have some fire all right. fire was involved yeah, yeah. So, although it was a lot of it was green screen they did have to have some fire in the place <laughs> and uh, they lit this stuff and the ceiling started to drop down. Oh, smoke, no. <laughs> smoke level. We were all like this, you know. We had to, and it's not the easiest place to waft smoke out of. Mm. So we, ne- we nearly came a cropper in the shooting of that. <laughs> uh, uh, not very health and safety. No. Um, but it was, uh, yeah. Uh, interestingly, the big, the big set piece scene where um, I slaughter all the, um, the other 11 uh, in a uh, car. Mm. One of these. That scene there was fantastic because it was on three levels. Really, the big, mm-hmm. the big uh, room was divided into essentially three stages, if you like. Yeah. Uh, so all the action happened within that one space, and um, in the midst of it, quite a long day shoot or quite a long afternoon shoot, and uh, heat building, and uh, 
Yeah, David Nutter, the director, was amazing at handling it all. He's a very gentle, sort of mild-mannered kind of approach to it, yeah. which is how, why he managed to get such good results, I guess. Uh, but uh, in the midst of all this melee and the, the complexity of the scene, uh, he, just, he just broke off and went... And he pointed to a boom operator mm. and said, Are you okay? Do you need a glass of water? Mm. Well, none of us had noticed this guy was just about to drop. Oh, no. He was about to expire. But in the midst of handling all the other stuff, David just picked that out that yeah. moment oh. and got the guy and, and basically rescued that guy from a fainting fit <laughs> that none of us had even noticed was going to happen. Yeah. That, that really point. That's that's some skill, isn't it? It is, yeah. Because you, yeah, you know, yeah. because people don't see like behind the camera. You might have, the, you know, if you've got let me even three, four actors on in front of the camera. There's that. There's a load of people behind the camera, and there's so yeah, with all that activity going on, so you know, much. the cameras, yeah. the, the sound up, yeah. everything like that. To, yeah, to pick and up that, that one it. person was. Uh, yeah. That was great. That was, those those were uh, interesting moments. Also, just off off duty time at the uh, at the hotel, <laughs> meeting everyone, meeting other cast members. You know. Uh, it was great fun. Really, yeah. really, really good. It is. I mean, in the series, in a way, it's like a who's who of British British acting as well. Cause yeah, absolutely. So many, yeah, yeah. Guess... Peter, Peter, Peter Dinklage, and um, uh, it was just it, it, you got to meet just about yeah. everyone. I was there for off and on for about four weeks. Mm. Believe it or not, they had me flying back and forth in, yeah. uh, over that time scale. So I got to meet quite a range of people from the, from the, from the, from the cast, and it was Excellent. great. You know, people that people that I perhaps wasn't even involved with on screen. Yeah, what was Peter mm -hmm. like himself? Lovely. He's someone I'd love to meet. He was, he just seems to be such a great person. He really is. He's uh, uh, completely unassuming, mm -hmm. charming, uh, and just a uh, no you know no no barrier to just uh, uh, normal conversation <laughs> and chat. Just yeah. seemed. To me, the most natural thing in the world is to chat with him. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, he's, Amelia was obviously lovely. Uh, David Nutter. Uh, I mean, everyone really. I can't. I can't really point to a person that I thought. Well, I could, and if I could point to a person that I thought was <laughs> an absolute, I wouldn't say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> but I couldn't. I could. I couldn't really yeah. do that. In this instance, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a, a joy. Fantastic. I know um, Peter's character Tyrion is probably my favourite character in the whole throughout the whole series. I just yeah. think he's the protagonist of it all because he knows everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really yeah. does. He has. Well, I was actually doing a speech today, um, and it was uh, to a team, to my team, and it was about yeah. IT change management. And I said the IT change manager is the Tyrion Lannister of game in Game of Thrones because <laughs> you have to know everybody's business and be able to you know negotiate with everybody to ensure that you get the best deal. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so that's that's, it. Like, that's, that's it. quite a nice little thing. That's it, right. You are you are yeah, yeah. you are you are Tyrion of the <laughs> of the IT world, yeah. The boardroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite cool. Um yeah, so it's a, you're right, it's lovely. I mean Peter's one I'd love to have on my show one day. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> well yeah, I think yeah, if you did you'd find him very easy to chat to, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure he'd very good interviewee. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It's just trying to get to them. It's like a publicist to like doctors' receptionists. I find quite often. Yeah, that publicist and agents uh, yeah. can be uh, they can be difficult. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, yeah. unless you're offering the old cash, I actually got told by an actress the other day the reason I haven't heard from her is because I wasn't offering any money for them, and I was like, right, okay, sorry, <laughs> I don't earn anything. So. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when, when I was there, a lot of the actors were talking about getting themselves publicists. Publicists. Yeah. Uh, and I took a decision at that time not to do that. <laughs> I didn't think there was much scope for one in my particular niche market mm. career. But but uh, yeah, it's 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 a thing, isn't it? People have to have oh, yeah. them, I guess, beyond a certain level. No, uh, definitely, definitely. Otherwise, the amount of requests that they must get, they'll just get inundated. I, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. When you're yeah. at Arnie's I'm, level and still Stallone's, <laughs> I, I would think so. And yeah, it would be handy to have somebody that could take care of that. You know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, how stern a gatekeeper they are, that's another matter. I don't oh, know, yes. uh, like I say, doc doctors, NHS doctors receptionists. That's what I class them as. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I wouldn't possibly impugn those final, fine people. Oh, um, no, they're fantastic people. They obviously, they know that they really do work hard. But all wise choice, wise <laughs> choice. You may have to go to the, a doctor's surgery tomorrow. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, no. I'm, yeah, I'm not knocking there, but I'm just saying they're, they're very good at I'm their jobs. I'm, I'm joking. No, no, don't worry. I'm, I'm just writing it because I know. 
I actually said that to someone once, and she was a doctor's receptionist, but she fell about laughing because she goes, it's so true. <laughs> yeah, well, right, yeah. yeah. Excellent. And uh, kind of moving on, um, I know that's what I'm wrapping it up now. We've been on just chatting for a yeah. while. That's great. You get, you've been on Outlander as well. Now, this is much more close to your home. I would say. Well, yeah, yeah <laughs> shoot-wise, yeah, 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 absolutely. Obviously, yeah. period-wise, it's several hundred years before you. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, what it, was that experience like? Because that's a great show. It was nice. Yeah, it was. It was. It was quite quite uh, in and out involvement. Really, a lovely little scene though. I did do. I did enjoy doing it. Set was lovely, uh, and the little uh, chapel where we did the, the the main scene really of my involvement was just to simply to take that confession. You know, and uh, yeah, it was lovely. It was it was actually a, a, again a, a well written little scene, and uh, I did enjoy it. Uh, I haven't read the books. Um, we do have the book in the house. I still mm-hmm. haven't read it, uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it's a good show, and it's good for Scotland to have. You know that work going on at these studios in mm-hmm. Cumbernauld. Uh, great for us to have that here, and yeah. uh, more of it, please. You know, bring it on. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm. I'm... Uh, and I'm sure, you know, as the Scottish government are, are fully, fully behind trying to expand that industry here. Uh, so you never know; maybe more coming. It'd be good. Oh, it would be. It'd be great. I mean, I'm only, I've only just, I've only seen season one, so I'm quite far behind on Outlander. But I do love You're the right. concept. You're right; it's it's huge for Scotland. I mean, one of the actors who's been on before, he recently also did. Um, he brought fans from America. They all came over. I think that he's, he owns a theatre. I can't remember his name now, and it's so. Annoying. Uh, <laughs> he's a lovely guy, but he owns a. Th- he's actually in, in Scotland. He owns a theatre in Scotland. He helps run it with a youth theatre and everything. All and, right. And he's and because of just one his appearance, he was. I think he was in a very short appearance in Outlander as well. Yes, yes, and yes. The support that's thrown in, people have like supported and they funded the theatre. They funded the youth theatre. They've been able to How do amazing. loads of stuff and and it boosts another further generation. And he's used that. Um, to sort of carry on, and he's hosted Outlander reunions and things out in Scotland. It's, it's, oh, really? Yeah, so you know, he's drawing. There's a there is a huge amount because I mean, obviously, out, people come to Scotland anyway because it's a beautiful country. Um, but Outlander, That's right. it, it sells that. It, it does sell that. No question about it. It sells. It does. Uh, it really sells. Sells it. Scotland as well. Definitely. It, it, it's it's selling a few other things as well, <laughs> which, uh, which unionists up here in Scotland are getting a bit upset about. You know, <laughs> yeah. having up nationalist passions, which uh, which uh, is, doesn't go down well with, uh, oh, with, no. certain, with certain certain people <laughs> up here. But but that bit, you know, it's all to the good. It's it's, 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 it's as you say, it sells Scotland. It sells the idea, and yeah. hopefully more more people visit as a result. You know. Oh yeah, I mean to be fair, even I think like when I was a. A nationalist after watching season one, thinking, "Good God, no wonder you want to, you know, no one, seriously, because uh, what the English did was oh, unbelievable." Well, yeah, what what's what what the English uh, the equivalent of politicians in those days mm. did, you know, it was um, yeah, then was tough times. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like we started out with Edward Longshank style, you know, yeah, him, yeah. him and his yeah. uh, right, that was even further back, but yeah, yeah, lots, yeah, yeah. lots yeah. of oppression, I think. Uh, which yeah, I mean, that, that's right. I think that's that, that's just, that's one of the fundamental components of uh, enslavement isn't it you've mm. got about people and you know colonizing a people you've got to take away their confidence yeah their belief in themselves and uh, it, it has a it has a long-standing effect on the psyche of a nation that sounds a bit <laughs> i won't say the word but that sounds a bit pretentious it was a w word i was going to use but it does have that effect on the on, mm-hmm. on the confidence of a nation and i think that if you tell people they're stupid and, and useless long enough, they buy into it, you know, yeah. and react to it by whatever means is possible, whether it's rebelling and becoming a bit, a bit antsy or whether it's cowering and uh, swallowing it. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's happened to Scotland. I'm, I'm probably waffling, actually. Hello. Oh, no, it's fine. No. My soapbox, I'm taking my soapbox now and putting it to the side. That's all right, yeah. Uh, believe me, I've got, I've got the soapbox right here. I could stand on all night. Um, and you yeah. should see the conversations I have with the Blyde, American actors Blyde, as well. Blyde, Blyde. <laughs> yeah, no, Blyde couldn't know. <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're probably worse than, worse than them all then. But, um, yeah, no, the conversations I have with some of the American actors about obviously their politics, because so, you just can't help it. It's such a modern... modern. Uh, oh, God, yeah. It's just... It's just Nightmarish. Uh, it is. It is. Anyway, um, so kind of in parting, before I stop the recording, I mean... Yeah. What, 
what we're going to see you in soon. If we're going to see you on screens or anything soon. And um, no, I don't think so. you're going to hear me. I'm going to be reading some more audio for uh, Penguin. I, I read okay. for a couple of authors, mm -hmm. um, and I'm reading one actually next month, which is uh, for James Oswald. Uh, a, the Gathering Storm, it's called. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be reading that. And, uh, find it in an audio store, uh, an audio book retailer near you. Uh, but yes, that's my next work. Excellent. Uh, and beyond that, I'm going to a con in Barcelona. Oh, nice! It'll be fun. Yeah. yeah, Dragon Riders Con. Oh, I've heard of that one. That looks good. <laughs> yeah, it looks fun. It does. Uh, it'll be interesting to be there at the times they are a changing over there. Mm. <laughs> ah, God, the politics. <laughs> it was the politics. Leave it to a Scotsman. <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, okay, just one last thing. Anything you'd like to say to listeners and viewers before, again, before the recording stops? Like to Thank you very stuff? much for listening and being interested enough to ask a question and, uh, and not switch off. Thank cool. you. Thanks so much, Ian. That was really, really great and real pleasure talking to you. Thanks for the time. Thanks for people who sent in the questions and thanks to everybody who's going to listen and watch this. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Hope you've all had fun. This has been Chris Gordon with Ian Hanmore on Hellblazer Biz.